Hi hey guys, it's John and welcome to John's Breakfast Club. In today's Breakfast Club, I want to talk about hoarding and why I think hoarding can be a good thing. Well, why I think hoarding can be an effective and sustainable thing to do. But of course, I'm also going to talk about when hoarding is ineffective and unsustainable. And it's actually the latter that I'm going to use for an example today because yesterday, I sold a piece of electronic that I really hated. I couldn't endorse, but here's my thinking. That piece of electronic that was actually a charging mat for my iPhone, iPods and Apple Watch, but it took ages for the devices to charge when using that charging mat. So of course I felt it was like it didn't do its job. It was a waste of resources, like taking plastic and the materials and everything and creating that piece of device was just like a total waste of material. It was uh, unenvironmentally friendly to say at least. They could have used those materials to build something different that actually worked and actually did good. But the crappy manufacturers decided to build this crappy product and I bought it. Unknowingly of course, later figuring out how utterly useless the product was. So I was now stuck. So I was now stuck with this super awful, unfunctional product. So what did I decide to do? Well, the thing is that I have a, sort of like a rule in my life because even though I can't endorse the product, I don't want to put my name on it, but I still, don't want the manufacturers to win by being able to sell more of their products. So what I've come up with as sort of like a rule in my life is to not hoard awful products, only to hoard good things, you know? And my reason is that if I, if I take that awful product and put it back into the market, I sort of help saturate the market so that the manufacturers aren't able to sell as many new products. In other words, they aren't able to take as much raw materials and waste it on producing these awful non-functioning products. So what I did was actually sell it on a, a, a site called Fin.no, which is basically credit list for Norway. I sold it super like dirt cheap. Someone bought it. I bet they're happy with it. If not, I hope they sell it. I hope they don't hoard it. But by doing that, I prevented them from making a purchase from the company of a new item. And the reason why I'm going into this like sort of like rant is because when you are creating your wardrobe, when you're building a new wardrobe, what you discover is that you are stuck with all these old items, like apparel items that you can't use. And rather than throwing them away, what I suggest you do is to put them back into the market, to saturate the market so that other people, well, so that the manufacturers of those useless apparel items aren't able to sell more of them because you help saturate the market by donating your items to, for example, Goodwill. Or in Norway, we have like the Salvation Army is a big um, receiver of, of fabric donations. It's called Fretex. So that's basically where I'm going with this. If you're building your wardrobe and you, and you find that you're stuck with all these like useless apparel items, don't hoard them. That's not the effective and sustainable thing to do. The most effective and sustainable thing to do is always to place useless items back into the market to saturate the market so that people won't buy more of them. So it won't be made more new items like that. And that's basically what I was going with in this breakfast club. If you want to know more ways to create an effective and sustainable style, I highly recommend that you check out my Facebook group. It's called Effective and Sustainable Style. Links in the description. I'm John Bolmore, a style coach for professional communicators, and I'll see you in the next one.